Hey, what's up? I'm your host, Christian Patterson, here to bring you this week's edition of TV20's Inside Sports Report. The Cleveland Browns played host to Cleveland Metropolitan School District Special Olympics for their annual Play 60 Football Festival. The kids got to participate in numerous activities while interacting with current and former Browns players. So today's event is um, hosted by the Cleveland Browns. Uh, we bring uh, 800 students from the Cleveland Municipal School District out to um, students who have a disability out to the Browns facility to participate in activities that revolve around football, um, just getting moving, really um, promoting that Play 60 initiative that um, the NFL has. Just seeing them run through some of the drills and stuff, uh, it's really cool to be a part of that, you know? I, uh, it makes my day coming out here, you know, it's very easy. They say I make their day, but for me to come out here, it, it makes my day, it makes me feel better. And um, just being a small part of these kids is, you know, day is, is really cool. The Cleveland Browns remain active within the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. After installing five new football fields over the past five years, they continue to give. So the Browns um, are donating $5,000 to a interscholastic unified flag football league here in Cleveland schools. Um, we're piloting it um, with five high schools. And uh, what unified is, is where you have typical students or typical athletes and um, athletes with a special need on the same team working together. Special Olympics Ohio believes that um, acceptance and um, inclusion in the adult population really starts at the school age level. And so we, um, we're really promoting inclusion through sport. Um, and so we're really hoping that it becomes typical and normalized into the adult population to where um, being unified is just a way of life. On behalf of the Cleveland Browns, we are also excited to make one more special announcement today to further advance the game of football in the classrooms within the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. And with that, we have a check presentation that we would like to make to the Senate League in the Cleveland Metropolitan School District in support of the Special Olympics program and a new unifi unified sports program we will be presenting at your schools this fall. These funds, will be used, these funds will be used to ensure that children have the opportunity to learn and love the game of flag football like we do, and we're excited to introduce it to you this fall. Thank you very much. All the Special Olympic athletes were thrilled to come out to the facility and be a Brown for a day by participating in football activities. I ran, um, I threw the football inside of the bucket. Um, I had tried on the gear, that was, that was pretty cool. I'm having a lot of fun actually, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> um, it's great, it's great coming here. I had a, a lot of fun, I hope I come back next year. A lot of times someone with a disability doesn't um, get a lot of activity and so this um, this movement and this event with the Browns really allows those athletes to come out, really know what Play 60 is, get involved, get motivated to move and enjoy sport. Um, so we're really just promoting health and wellness throughout this entire program for, for all athletes and um, coaches. Once again, the Greater Cleveland Sports Commission has brought another premier sporting event to the city. The NCAA Division II Wrestling Championship was held at the Wolstein Center at Cleveland State University. Nearly 200 of the nation's top student athletes from Division II schools competed in a double elimination tournament. And almost 170 coaches, trainers, and officials were on hand to oversee the championship, which featured four sessions over a two-day competition with student athletes competing in 10 different weight classes. One day prior to the tournament, a press conference featuring the top five coaches in the NCAA Division II wrestling rankings was held, where they addressed their team's success for the season and they touched on their outstanding wrestlers that made it to this national tournament. The top 10 student athletes in the NCAA Division II wrestling rankings were a part of the press conference as well. Only three champions from last year's tournament returned, along with the champion from the 2016 tournament. 53 teams competed over a two-day span for a chance to move on to the championship round. 
but only 20 wrestlers would qualify. St. Cloud State prevailed to win their second straight NCAA Division II Wrestling Championship and their fourth in the past five years. With the victory, St. Cloud State capped off their perfect 20-0 season with a title. The Huskies finished with a team score of 95.5, beating out Willing Jesuit and McKendry. We're gonna take a quick break but we'll be right back with more of TV20's Inside Sports Report. I have been nominated for Best Horror Host of the Year at the Rondo Hatton Classic Horror Awards. I need you to go and tell them that I, Lamia, Queen of the Dark of Horror Hotel, am your pick for Best Horror Host. I'm counting on you guys, but until I see you next time, stay bloody. Awkward. I'm the awkward silence. You try to avoid me, then there I am again. But an awkward silence can be a great thing. Like Kelly here is about to demonstrate. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Welcome back to TV20's Inside Sports Report. I'm your host, Christian Patterson. The Cleveland Fusion Organization was established as a member of the National Women's Football League in 2001 and kicked off their first season in 2002. Now heading into their 18th season, the Fusion is still going strong while representing Cleveland's diversity in sports. Well, the Cleveland Fusion is a great organization. I think it's really unique as far as bringing together women from all different backgrounds to play football. So not only is it a sport that we've been told for so long we can't play, so we're kind of breaking barriers in that regard, um, but really just the camaraderie that we have and the family that we've built, I think really you know, shows Cleveland in a great light and to have some wins for us this season is gonna be you know, great to bring home. I think it's wonderful. I mean, these women come out here and, I mean, we got girls on our team that are seniors in high school to people that are in their 40s. And it's just giving them the opportunity to play a game that um, they don't typically normally get to play, you know, and nobody even thinks they should be playing. You know, you might see them play flag football or something like that, but you see so many more girls getting involved with football. Um, you know, it used to be once in a blue moon you see a girl, now there's, you know, multiple teams with girls on, a, on the team. Um, so I think it's, it's wonderful. I mean, it's, it's the sport is, of, of all sports, it's one of these ones that's growing. I mean, it's growing around the country. You see more and more women wanting to play football. Um, and it's just great. I mean, they, you know, football is, everybody loves football So in, in America. So I think it's really great that they're getting this opportunity. I grew up watching it with my, my dad and my brother. Every Saturday was college football. Every Sunday, we grew up watching the Minnesota Vikings. I'm not, I'm originally from Iowa, so we don't have our own team, but uh, I always wanted to play and never had the opportunity. So once I met Coach Jackson and found out that women's football was a real legitimate sport that, a, that female can play and compete in, I was, I was all on. When you're 23, 25, 30, 18, you still have in your mindset that football is only for men. So when we sit down and we, you know, we meet these young ladies and we talk to them, we talk to them about all the opportunities that our league has and the opportunity that they can play football, um, that those dreams from when they had 16 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, that those dreams still can come true, that those dreams can actually be achieved. Women's sports in general has been kind of an uphill battle. Um, you know, we're struggling with equal pay, equal recognition um, in the media, all sorts of things. Um, and so building the sports team up has been a challenge in that regard. Um, but I think it's, it's great to see the women out on the field because when you see them play, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. Just from a um, position wise, probably wide receiver and DB are probably the easiest ones to transition because um, it's, it's um, running routes, you know, doing something precise, you know, taking three steps, cutting in at an angle, things like that. Um, I think they're real good at. Um, and, this, and then just under, understanding what they should be doing on each play, you know, being able to draw, draw it up and then actually execute it. Um, I think they're pretty good at. Um, the hardest thing is probably just the, the upper body strength, so the line positions, you know, being able to, uh, 
you know, block is probably harder, um, but, uh, you know, and, and tackle, same thing. You know, they don't, there's not another sport out there like football where you're actually tackling somebody or actually coming up and hitting someone. So those are probably the hardest. But probably just like the running and the, and the skill type positions are probably the easiest to transition. The Cleveland Fusion franchise is a family and family sticks together. So it was a no brainer for former player Martina Latessa to move into a coaching role after playing for numerous years. Players that I coach now never got to see, so it's getting them to buy into my program, like to, to trust the process that I'm doing. So when I say, oh, I've done this, I, you know, so that's kind of like the hard part is because they never were there. They never got to see what I'm talking about. But it wasn't um, hard at all. I think that like they'll bleed off hopefully on my passion and, and get them in. Well, I realized of being a female athlete and coaching female athletes, so I, I kind of have that edge on them because these girls, you have to be there emotionally for them, psychologically, mentally. I mean, it's up and down. It is emotional. So not only am I like their coach, I want to be their big sister. I want to be their friend. I enjoy it so much. I, was, I grew up playing basketball, being part of a team since I was eight years old. And you kind of lose that after you go to college and you graduate and all of a sudden you're in the workforce sitting in a cubicle every day you just you miss that that family and that team and the competitiveness so just having that back in your life is is awesome and you I met so many different people that I never would have met in any other aspect of my life here the Cleveland Fusion opened their season on the road in Pittsburgh against the passion and Clevelanders are very familiar with Pittsburgh when it comes to football. It's definitely a rivalry there. I mean, you, a lot of women go and watch the Cleveland Browns versus the Pittsburgh Steelers, even on both sides. So to be able to be a part of it, now to say, hey, we have a rivalry here of our, of our own in women's football, it, mean, it means a lot. I think we've got a lot more talent this year, a lot more commitment, and we're ready to you know, see where we are. That's, it's kind of a benchmark, see where we are that first game. When we see them, it's like, yo, if we go one and seven and we beat them, we're good. You know, it's one of those, still one of those type of things where, um, you know, it's still that Cleveland Pittsburgh thing. You know, it's the <laughs> orange and brown versus the black and gold as always. And one week later, make sure you come out and support your Cleveland Fusion for their first home game. So our first home game is April 13th at Maple Heights High School against Indianapolis. Um, obviously it's Cleveland, so the weather's kind of hit or miss come that time of year. Um, but we have four home games in total, so our next games will be May 11th, as well as June 1st and June 8th. So we'd love to have you guys come out to Maple Heights High School. Uh, it's a really family-friendly environment. Uh, kids 12 and under are free, so it's totally affordable for, you know, for everyone to come on out and see these women, you know, kill it on the field. Make sure you go out and support your Cleveland Fusion women's football team. April 13th in Maple Heights High School for their first home game of the season. Thanks for watching the Inside Sports Report. If you would like to catch past episodes of the Inside Sports Report, classic sports, or any city championship games, head over to our TV20 YouTube channel and click on subscribe.